Hey. A little while ago, Jason Sater posted on the Bolt Action Facebook page um, a, a, a document that he's working on, and I would highly encourage you all to go and check it out. The link is in the de description in the doobly-doo. Um, it's a document of rules that people tend to forget about for Bolt Action. And um, I've already commented a few times on it, and I just wanted to showcase it today for you guys and talk you through what it is, basically. So, here it is. Off-forgotten rules gathered from posts on vari various Bolt Action communities. So, there are uh, several different sections here. There's one for infantry, there's one for HQs, vehicles, artillery, and tanks and buildings. So let's just uh, the the infantry one. Small team rule does apply does apply to mortar teams and MG teams. Yes, it absolutely does, um, which means that you can one shot an MG team with a sniper. Um, all team weapons has this small team rule, um, <coughs> and it also means that uh, they can um, because they're team weapons that they um, um, they can become small teams. So uh, MGs and mortar teams, uh, if they're down to two men, yes, they are small team. Um, I think the only thing that it doesn't apply to is artillery. Um, units can split fire when firing from different sides of a building. Hmm. I did not know that one. But it is true, isn't it? You can fire from the windows that you're at, which means that you can split fire. Hmm. However, you can only ambush once. So if, if you're on ambush in a building, you can only shoot once and at one unit. Full strength squads of at least 10 men re-roll roll failed order tests, not morale, including coming on from reserves. Yes, and that is a pretty good one. I've seen very, very good international players use this one to great effect. Simply having, you know, shirkers being the best outflankers of the game for some reason. Flamethrowers shooting over three inches. But six or less gets the plus one and the minus one. So the uh, pl point blank and the minus one for long range. Yes, they do, which is weird and nobody can figure that one out. Snipers firing within 12 inches and not declaring out of scope counts as a miss. Yep. Um, you have to be able to figure out whether it's within or, uh, or outside 12 inches and then declare whether or not you're using the scope. Uh, otherwise, you'll miss. And you can't actually snipe. Um, Inside that, just declare I'm using it as a rifle. Support team weapons. Uh, exceptional kills deletes the unit. That was the one I had the first one a little bit confused with. Yes. The loader for a squad based weapon must be within one inch of the weapon and cannot be the NCO. Yeah. So there are times when you'll have to choose between killing your NCO or your loader for that flamethrower in that engineer unit, which sucks. Teams, gun crews, MMGs, mortars, down to one man, count as if they've lost an NC. Oh, yes, they do. Um, so they have minus one, just like uh, if an infantry unit has had lost its NCO. So, yeah. Any two-man team that loses the assistant must take a morale check for losing half. Yes, of course. That's just the... Uh, <clears throat> and then it has the minus one, like we just discussed. Regroup actions after close quarters cannot move a unit off the table or into a building. It cannot use. Hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's in the uh, moving off table. Uh, it might actually be in uh, page 80. Um, I know I have messed this one up at times. I have moved units off the table. Yeah. Yeah, it says here. Um, mm, Winner regroups, page 80. Uh, roll d6. Uh, units moving cannot exit the battlefield, mount transports, or enter buildings. That's just it. Um, any unit that is down can leave the dice on the table and stay down the entire next turn and remove the three pins. Yes, and there are certain times when you want to do that. If you have a lot of pins and you don't have a lieutenant nearby and maybe they're inexperienced, you want that unit just to stay down, just to remove a little bit of the pins, just keep it alive. Flankers that attempt to come on the board and fail their order test reveal all sides. Um, yes, there is a, uh, a little bit of section uh, about outflanking that says once you have outflankers, you have to declare where all outflankers are coming on from. 
there is a little bit of controversy still about whether or not you have to actually um, succeed in your order test. Um, so th there, that is still debated. So uh, whether or not, I mean, so as soon as your first outflanker come on, then you would have to declare all outflankers where they are, um, or whether or not just having to try to come on uh, means that you reveal it, it all. That is still being debated as far as I know. Units that do not deploy from a serve are considered killed at the end of the game. Yes, and that can lose you games. So don't do that. Get them onto the board. HQs. Medics can't save kills by exceptional damage. Nope. They are dead. Heavy weapons and close combats, they are just dead. Medics and chaplains can't fire weapons offensively or hold objectives. So that means that they can shoot their pistols if they're being charged. But they can't hold an objective, which makes them not very useful. Useful, right? Um, then we have, if an officer is killed, is an assistant, is that minus one to leadership? Yes, just like if the NCO had died, the officer is considered the NCO. Forward artillery observer get, that gets two attacks, that is, no, that's not an artillery, that's an air observer that gets two attacks, must completely resolve the first one before the second one can be called in. Hmm, I didn't know this one. Um, and that can delay the second attack for quite a long while if the skies are empty. If you continue rolling that one where, the, where it doesn't come on, that means that you can delay for quite a long time. Don't actually have my US book anywhere nearby, so um, not going to check it. But an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I've, I haven't actually seen anyone bring down two airstrikes in like that rapid succession. Um, but I suppose you could, and you could deliver a lot of pins with it. Transports recce vehicles. Transports, uh, guns, additional weapons operated by passengers use passengers' experience. And yes, um, I don't, uh, where do I have one? I have my LVT, my painted LVT somewhere. I don't know. It's in the box somewhere. Anyways, um, my LVT has extra pintle mounts, two extra pintle mounted uh, MMGs and one front facing pintle mounted MMG. And I'm also right now painting up a Polston um, um, automatic cannon for it as well. Just want to have all the guns so I can shift it around. And yes, your transport crew can fire one weapon system. Any other weapon system is considered to be fired by the guys inside it. They're still going when you activate your transport. That's still when they shoot. But you're using their experience modifier and their pins uh, because they are the ones actually crewing it. It doesn't mean that the, the transporter unit can't act afterwards, which again is, is relatively fun and it's sort of breaking some of the basics of the rules here. But it it is what it is. Units leaving a transport cannot assault. Oh, but God, I wish sometimes that they could. Um, I just have one special rule for uh, German panzer gun ideas that they can assault out of their Hanamax. Please. That would make so much sense. Um, but they can't. If an occupied transport is assaulted, the occupants get out and defend it. If there's more than one unit, the defender chooses which unit. If there are two units of the same size, the attacker chooses who to fight. The defender can get out anywhere they want. And this one is still up for debate because how how much do they actually move? Do they like do they are they advancing out of the the truck? Are they running out of the truck? Are they making making an emergency disembark of a D6? Um this is something where I think uh, we need a little bit of clarification from Warlord Games. But this move can and should trigger ambushes because um, because your assaulters are counted as if they're assaulting the vehicle. So you, you still reach it, even though the, uh, the defenders now get out 12 inches behind the vehicle. You're still actually counting as if you had assaulted the vehicle. So you, you hit them, even though you couldn't. And then you fight. And you fight first if you were in a direct line to the vehicle, even though you're now like moving in circles. Um, but if you're moving in that line there, behind and into somebody else's ambush, you get shot at, which makes no sense. Are you, <laughs> for me, either you're hitting a vehicle 
or you're hitting the unit. Right now, as rules are, rules as written, you're assaulting the vehicle, but you are counting as if you're assaulting the vehicle, but you're counting as if you're assaulting that unit because you're moving into line of fire that, that the defending unit uh, is forcing you into. It makes no sense. There is there, there that literally break, breaks the immersion for me. That is that's just dumb. Uh, I think the the logical conclusion here would be that if you assault a vehicle, the defenders will have to get one inch out of the vehicle in the line of the assault. That's the only way that this should make any sense. Not how it's written. Not how it's played. Wrecky vehicles can reverse at full advance rate. Yes. And dual direction can even run in reverse. Yes. Um, that's true. And there is also something when uh, they have with them make their escape move. Let's just check that. Escape moves are also fun. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Where is it? Um, special rules 118. Here, Reiki escape reactions. Blah blah blah. I haven't acted yet. Blah, blah, blah. Right. An escape reaction is a move at advance or run rate, which may be forward or reverse. So that means you can actually, when you're making an escape move, you can run back. You can make a run backwards. And if you are a wheeled vehicle, you can even turn. Um, rules as written says that you can make a run backwards when you escape. That's quite a long move. You're going back. So if you're uh, if you're tracked, that's nine inches. Um, if no, no, sorry, eighteen inches. If you're wheeled, that is twenty-four inches. Um, that's insane. Right. Vehicles with a visible enemy to their front arc and a failed order test must make a reverse move and go down. Yes, all vehicles, when they fail an order test, they will move back from the closest visible enemy to their front. Soft skinned, roll on the damage table when damaged, um, but it's never superficial, except in close combat, where any damage means the unit is destroyed. But remember, you still have to penetrate the armor of a soft skinned in order to destroy it. So you still have to go to the damage table before you destroy a soft skinned. But that actually also counts for open top vehicles. Open top vehicles, any damage will immediately kill it. Um, somebody sim simply slips in a grenade. Um, yeah. Vehicles drive in straight lines with one or two turns, not curved paths. Ooh. Somebody use, using curved paths? You shouldn't. Um, it is a straight line. I know it breaks immersion, and it, it even, I mean, if some of you, like me, you may have uh, actual wheels on your vehicles, right? Um, if you're buying old toys and stuff, um, you shouldn't really like move them like that, even though they can. <clears throat> And it's fun. It's like being a kid again, playing with cars. Um, they they do drive in straight lines, and remember, they turn on their center, which means that you shouldn't drive straight up against the wall um, of a house, for instance, or against the edge of the board, because you can't leave the board. And if you're turning on the center, you're you're going to your end is going to stick out of the board. You can't move if you do that. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually play this against a noob, but against experienced players, I'll definitely say, well, okay, you placed it there, you can't move now, you can't, you can't turn, you can go back and forth, you can't turn. Um, yeah, artillery and HE. So remember the recurring artillery uh, rules, which says something like you have to be within 12 inches. Um, so if you have multiple artillery pieces. You should set them up so that there are 12 inches between the artillery pieces, because that will mean that you can move a crew from one to the other. Multi-launchers cannot hit the same unit twice. That is not actually what it says on page 71, and there I cannot cannot find any place in the rule book that says this. Uh, page 71 speaks about multiple HE shots, so for uh, autocannons, for instance. Um, 
So I think that needs to be checked. I don't think it's right at all. Multi-launchers can hit the same unit twice if, you know, the um, if the templates overlap or, yeah. Open top vehicles hit by indirect fire take plus one to the damage chart. Yeah, they do. That, and that hurts if they're hit indirectly. I have had many a Bren carrier destroyed by a light mortar shell just dumping down punk, on a six. And it, it just, poof, it dies. Um, if a mortar has ranged in using a spotter and the spotter is killed, the mortar stays ranged in. Yes, it doesn't lose it, even though it can't actually see it anymore. Um, which is weird and a little bit strange, um, but it is true. So you have to move if a mortar is ranging in on you. You have to move away. Heavy weapons fire, not small arms, HE, um, versus artillery. Um, that causes exceptional damage, destroys the gun. Um, survivors can recruit other guns. That is why you need to be within 12 inches, right? Um, but exceptional uh, hits, such as from a sniper, will not actually destroy the gun. Um, they all that that will mean though that you can pick out one unit of the crew and possibly even get the crew to be um, out of cohesion, so they have to move next turn, which is kind of fun. Um, an artillery piece that is assaulting assaulted by a tank, which is eight plus armored, close top, is destroyed. Yes. I've done this once in all my games of bold action. It was glorious just running over that <laughs> that multi launcher. It was a multi launcher, a uh, land matter. So I just ran it over it and it died. It got flat. Multi launchers can fire at an empty building. Yes, remember that. Stay away from buildings if the enemy has multi launchers. Multi launchers can fire smoke. Yes. Don't know why it would, but they can. Um, yeah. Direct fire HE weapons. Uh, oh, remember, multi launchers firing smoke. They're never going to hit on anything better than a six anyway. Direct fire HE weapons don't suffer the minus p uh, one pen for long range. Um, direct fire HE. Yeah, yeah, that that's only uh, anti tank uh, weapons that some of them that suffer that. Spotters are always down if they don't use the orders. If they don't use the unit's order die, yes, they are, and they also count as hidden, I think, which means that they're pretty hard to hit, um, unless you're a sniper. Tanks, massive damage, a result of three or more uh, than needed to damage, uh, results in two rolls. Don't know who forgets this, that, that you absolutely should do. Um, Massive damage, roll the two damage dice for massive damage one at a time and resolve in that order, which is very important. I see loads of people just rolling two dice looking for, oh, did I get a four? And then they don't, and, and then you have to figure out wh which one was first. Ah, that sucks. Roll them one at a time, resolve them one at a time. Terrain and buildings. Now, units must run into buildings and can advance or run out of buildings. Yes. Um... Which makes for some weird and wonky rules. If your unit is in a rough ground next to a building, <coughs> oh, terribly sorry about that. I think I need to dust in here. This is my game room. It doesn't get cleaned as often as it should. Um, right. Yes, a unit must run into a building, but if you're in, in rough ground, according to the rule book, you can't get a run order. Um, so I've actually asked uh, Warlord Games to clarify this several times. The only reasonable thing to say is, no, you cannot run in rough ground, but you can get a run order, um, which would mean that you can move into the building. Um, but as it stands now, this one is, is out for the judges. Um, and you can advance or run out of the building, which means that you can assault out of a building. Nice. Water is heavy cover in the, on the D-Day book. Yes, but uh, basically you can decide what water is because uh, terrain is always on something that should be decided between the players. So water being heavy cover actually does not apply for 
uh, the rule book as such. So if you're not playing the D-Day uh, book, let it be anything you want. HE versus buildings. Oh yeah, that is always fun. You can shoot HE at even empty buildings, but if there's someone in that building, you're actually shooting at the unit, not the building. Um, which means it can go down or be small team. Units can fire two weapons per opening in a building and split fire. Yes, we already have that one. Uh, extra protection. Units in building require plus one to damage, so in experience you need a four to kill those. Regular you need a five, and veterans you need a six. Units that are either wholly within buildings or um, they're not counters as within. Yeah, you have to, every unit, every man in your unit has to be able to reach a window or a door to get inside the building. You cannot have some of them standing behind the building and some of them in the building. HE templates cannot cross building walls. I did not know this one. Page 125. Interesting. So... What does it say? The unit inside the floor of the building suffers damage, yep. The explosion might cause the building to collapse. Note that if a HE shell explodes outside a building uh, and a template clips the building, any unit inside the building are not hit, assuming that the wall absorbs. Yeah. So an HE template that hits a building actually doesn't hit anything in the building unless you're shooting the building. Hmm. Interesting. I did not know that one. Right. Go and check out the list and, and please uh, write your comments uh, on the, that list. It's a great little tool for uh, reminding you of all the rules that you forget all the time. Cheers.